Hello, my name is Megan Goodrick, and today I'm going to be giving a presentation on the importance of ambulance inspection and the importance of checking off your ambulance at every shift and making sure your equipment is working properly. We're going to start off today with introductions. If everyone would please grab a name tag and write your name on it, and go ahead and take a seat at any of the five numbered tables. These will be your groups for the activity today, and feel free to introduce yourselves to each other as these will be the people that you'll be giving your presentation at the end of the day with. Um, in the center of every table should be a schedule for today. Please look over it and prepare any questions that you might have, including any questions about the material or any questions about the schedule. Let me start off by saying my name is Megan Goodrick. I am an EMT intermediate with Walker County EMS, and I am teaching this class today because I believe that sometimes the things we consider the littlest on our checklist, such as ambulance inspection, are sometimes the most important to our jobs in EMS. I feel like ambulance inspection is often overlooked and considered something that only a 911 truck should look over or something only a busy truck should look over, but these are very important for every ambulance. So today's schedule, we're going to start with the introductions, schedule, and goal review for about 10 minutes and then break into lecture. We'll have a small break and then continue with our activity and our presentations and finish with any questions and comments you all might have. Our class goals for the day is at the conclusion of this presentation, EMS personnel should be able to perform a timely yet thorough ambulance inspection while identifying key ambulance components. Personnel should be familiar with efficient inspection techniques, including a systematic approach to checking off your ambulance. Our objectives for today, your effective objective, is given the information presented in the presentation, students should understand the importance of ambulance inspection. Your psychomotor objective, should that be Participants should be able to be perform a detailed inspection to their benefit in a timely manner. Our cognitive objective is that after finishing the presentation, participants will demonstrate proper knowledge of crucial ambulance equipment and components. So let's get started. Our first subject is what makes an ambulance an ambulance? Is it the personnel on the truck, such as an EMT, an AEMT, an intermediate or a paramedic? Or is it more so the equipment, the oxygen, stretcher, the medications that we carry, our monitor with the ability to defibrillate, or our splints, dressings, or is it our mobilization equipment? What do you think really makes an ambulance an ambulance? And at this time, we're going to talk about why are these items important to us? Why, which ones do you feel like we use the most? And where do you feel like they should be pre presented in the ambulance. Should they be readily available? Are they something that should be tucked away in a bag? Or should they be something a lot of trucks do is in an outside compartment by their own? Most ambulances are organized so that every time you go in, you know where everything is. So why are these items important to us? Without our equipment and supplies, our EMS truck, our 911 truck, our ambulance is nothing but a taxi. We save lives with our equipment and the knowledge of the personnel on the truck. And when the community calls 911 or EMS, they are expecting a higher level of help than what they can provide. If they felt as though they could do it or that they had the equipment to do it, they wouldn't call 911 in the first place. Everything has its place. Like I said earlier, most ambulances are very organized. Everything in the ambulance box has a place or compartment where it's stored. This helps to make things easier to locate during a call, and this in turn makes inspecting the ambulance much easier. Having a compartment for everything makes it readily available during a call. That way we're not fidgeting around looking for an innovation tube, or fidgeting around with the monitor trying to figure out how it works, or looking for a backboard in every compartment in the truck. With everything in its place, we know where it is, we know that it works, and we are ready for anything. So there's a lot of different ways of inspecting an ambulance. Um, you'll see on your desk included is a copy of this checklist from the presentation. And a lot of places do still use a paper checklist to check off their ambulance. Um, a lot of new, newer services or more up-to-date services use a computer program like AmbuTrack or Operative IQ. And these, you go to a compartment, you check or you select your unit number, go into your unit and you check off each bag individually, you check off each area individually. And this as well is organized similar to this checklist as everything has a place. 
A lot of companies don't have a checklist or a computer program. They label every compartment with what's in it and the number of things in it. MCHD uses this method as well as they use a computer program. That way you can have two people tag team an ambulance inspection. And the best way of inspecting an ambulance is a systematic approach. Two people going in at once and being able to ryth rhythmically check off your ambulance every shift, knowing where everything is and doing the same walkthrough each time so you know what to expect, you know if something's missing. These techniques really help. So let's go into inspecting equipment. When you are inspecting supplies and equipment, you should be more than just making sure it's on the truck. You should take the time to look at expiration dates, all medications, all cath needle catheters, most intubation tubes, and anything that's really not sterile comes with an expiration date. Check for battery power. Does it work? Your monitor, if you have a ventilator, um, any thermometers, blood glucometer, anything, you should be able to know that this equipment works efficiently and that it's going to last you the whole shift unless you need to get a backup battery. Another thing we look for, is it broken? Is it damaged? Is it open? A lot of this we, we don't look into too well and we don't realize it's broken or damaged until we pick it up and try to use it. Any open needle catheter should be thrown away and replaced. Any open intubation tube should be thrown away and replaced. Um, this is a very important technique because it does need to be reported to your supervisor and that way it can be replaced if it's a major operator operating function such as your monitor. Another question we need to ask, is there a backup? In case that one fails, do we have a backup? Most trucks have equipment on their truck and on their in their compartments, but they also have a backup in a bag that they carry and with them on the calls. It's always nice to have a backup, especially perfect exam example, thermometer and a glucometer. Those are those can fail at any time and it's always nice to have an extra on the truck. Is it clean? My number one pet peeve is having blood anywhere on the stretcher or anywhere on the monitor. These items should be clean because every patient sees them and every patient uses them. So please make sure your ambulance is clean and presentable. And the last one that is very important, is it full? Is there gas? Is the battery full? Will I run out on a long or back-to-back -back calls? So most trucks do have more than one needle catheter in every size. Most trucks have more than one battery for the stretcher on the truck, and more, tr more trucks are having more options of different equipment to use just in case one's broken or one runs out. And these are important things that people should look for. So the benefits of an accurate and detailed inspection include that you have the knowledge of equipment locations, so you're not scrounging around looking for your equipment in the middle of a very severe call. A fully stocked ambulance ready for any call, situation, and back-to-back -back calls is always a good thing. You never know if it's going to be a high or a low volume day. You never know. Up-to-date medications, very important. You never want to give a patient an expired medication. And if you're in the situation where that's the only thing you have, that's an awful situation to be in. And it looks really bad when you have to call your supervisor and ask him, what else can I do? Another full Oxygen tanks is always nice. You never want to run out of oxygen. Just about every patient on the truck gets that. And you don't ever want to be in the situation where you have to have somebody bring you back up oxygen or in the case that every single oxygen bottle on your truck is empty is an awful situation. Another really good benefit is whenever you have your full fluids, you're good on gas, you have working lights and sirens, you're not breaking down on the way to a call or on the way to the hospital with a patient in the back of your truck. And fully functional equipment, and that's what we just went over, all your equipment should function to the best of its ability. Um, even the old equipment, it should still work like new. Some of the disadvantages of an improper ambulance inspection include expired medications, and like I just said, that's an awful situation to have to call your supervisor and ask him, what else can I do? My medications are expired. Missing equipment. What happens whenever you get to a call and your stretcher is missing? That's an awful call to make. Broken non-functioning equipment. What are you going to do whenever you get there and your monitor that won't take a blood pressure or your monitor won't get a pulse ox? That's not fun to do everything manual every five minutes. Low gas fluid levels. Breaking down, like I just said, breaking down on the way to a call or breaking down with a patient in the back of your ambulance on the way to the hospital. 
running out of oxygen, medications, or supplies during a call. These pretty much void the idea of calling 911 and having that extra help because you don't, you no longer have the equipment and you never, you never checked your truck. So therefore, you are no longer that higher level of help that that patient called for. Broken and non-working lights and sirens. This is awful because when you think you're running hot and you run through an intersection and you by fact are not and get into a wreck, that looks bad on you. And that should be something, even though it seems very minute, should be something that is checked every shift. Using your time efficiently. An efficient ambulance inspection should take about 30 minutes with one person. Never put off inspecting your truck. If anything, show up early if you're on a, a very busy truck. Show up about 30 minutes early just to check your truck off before you get on shift so that you know you are ready to go in case you catch that call at shift change. Inspection should be done at the beginning of every shift change and restocking should be done after every call. This is a very important one. Some people wait and they don't restock their ambulance and then when the next shift comes on they catch a call at shift change. They haven't checked off their ambulance and that's not on the truck and therefore you are responsible for that other shift missing equipment. Once a month, set a date where medication and supplies expirations are checked and replaced. Usually this is done on the first of every month or the 30th of every month. You go through, check all your medications, check all your supplies that expire, and replace them. Ways to improve your inspection times and efficiency. Know your truck. This is a big one. Know your truck, know where your things are, know what should be where. And this gets easier every time you inspect your ambulance. You learn more and more and you know when something's missing. A systematic approach to inventory leads to a concise inventory and efficient use of time. Why not? A systematic approach is just helping you know your truck even more. And every time you come onto that truck, you know you're going to start in one place and finish in the next. Work together with your partner. Two sets of eyes are better than one. You might miss something, and it's always nice when your partner comes up and goes, Hey, did you check the battery on the stretcher? And you're like, Oh yeah, it should have worked. But then they check it, and it's dead. That's a life-saving tool. Communicate with previous or oncoming crews. No, hey, is there anything you have not replaced? Is there anything that needs to be replaced? Is there anything that we're missing? Are we out of stock of something? These are always nice things to know before you go to use them and realize they're gone. Where to start? A systematic approach is repeated that is repeated every shift is the best approach. A ex good example is start with the most used supplies to the least supplies. Go clockwise around the truck. Start with bags and move to the compartments. Work from the outside of the truck in. Or start at the top of your checklist. Repeat your systematic approach every shift to develop an attack strategy that you get more efficient and faster at each shift. And this is the approach that aids in helping you know your truck and leads to smoother calls. I cannot express how much that checking off your truck every day is just an opportunity for you to get to know your truck better. All right, everybody now can break for five minutes to go use the restroom and grab a snack or a drink. Class will resume in exactly five minutes. Please do not be late or we will continue without you.